everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday, and today we're going way back, 41 years to the year 1981, and we are opening this baseball card exchange authenticated sealed box of 1981 tops. I picked this box up at the, the uh, Triple Play Vintage store that I was at last weekend, and these boxes are typically, I think the cheapest one on eBay right now is about $1,000. I paid, I think it was right around 800 for this bad boy. Here is the uh, certification by Steve Hart, the owner of Baseball Card Exchange, saying it is a authentic unopened wax box and we should uh, have nothing but pristine unsearched packs in here. I really love the design of this box, by the way. Really kind of unique uh, when you match it up against other um, boxes from this era, at least the design. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. Thank you very much for being here. I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button as we bust this one open. And also don't forget to tap that notification bell so you get notified every single time that I post a new video. And if you'd like to join and support the channel as a channel member, you can click that join button or follow the link in the description. We're giving away this at the end of the month, the Julio Rodriguez autograph to a channel member. Um, I'm going to just choose amongst those channel members who had the first comment in each video from the month of September. So here we go, folks. Let's go ahead and bring in all of our Patreon members. Oh, boy. I always love opening old packs of cards. And this is 1981 Tops. You see a nice green uh, pack wrapper. There is no year on this one. I think they started that in, what, 82 maybe? Here's the back of the pack. And here we go. 1981 tops now we've done 81 tops once before in its own video what the heck happened to dusty baker there it looks like all scratched up at the top right and also there's the nice big stick of gum and we have some good news for you the gum is nice and crisp and not even destroying the card so this box was stored in a nice clean dry location by the way cody this is your pack you're up first you got robin young on the top hall of famer this card sold in the past month or so in a PSA 10 for like, I think it was like $340. So PSA 10s of Hall of Famers from this set will fetch a pretty penny. There's a second Hall of Famer there, Dennis Eckersley. And in terms of the best rookie cards, you got Tim Raines rookie card. You've got Kurt Gibson and Fernando Valenzuela are the guys that chase after along with Harold Baines. Hopefully we can find some of those. And then of course, Hall of Famers, the best one to find here is actually going to be the Ricky Henderson. It's his second year card. And then PSA 10. Cody, thank you very much. Uh, I've seen recent sales of that Ricky Henderson right around $2,000, and actually almost $3,000, like $2,800 to $3,200 on a PSA 10 Ricky. Michael's up next. Spot number two. Good luck to you, Michael. We got Amos Otis on the top. There's the gum. I am, I am almost tempted to eat this gum. I will take a bite of this gum if we pull two Ricky Hendersons and or two Nolan Ryans in this video because this gum actually, man, 41-year-old gum, it actually looks edible. Um, and just because there's no black mold on it or anything, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take a chance here. There's Al Oliver. I love the design of 1981, by the way. 81 has a great design. There's Goose Gossage, who's a Hall of Famer. If this is your first time seeing 1981 Tops, we'll also show you the back of the cards so you can see what they look like. Typical Tops back shows you their most recent, actually their entire batting record, which I really love. I wish all, I wish all um, companies would do that and show you their entire stat run. Although a lot of times nowadays you get their most recent year and that's it in their career line. Here's the next pack up. That gum's almost in one piece. We haven't had a piece of gum that has been complete and unbroken yet. There's Bobby Gritch. Dwight Evans was a very good player. Lonnie Smith, just remember him from the Braves. Never really liked him because he was on the Braves, and the Braves, of course, beat the Pirates. Let's switch these around. So far, nothing crazy in this pack. There's Rob Wilfong with the dirty batting glove. R Reenie Martin, is that, I've never heard of Man, he is really happy. Um, I'd be super stoked, too. I'd probably be smiling just like that if I had my own baseball card. Aaron, thank you very much. You're in the books. Tim's up next. Tim has five packs. Let's see what we can find here for you, Tim. There's four, and here's the fifth one. So uh, the big card, once again, we're looking for Ricky Henderson. It's his second year card, and based off of eBay recently sold, it's around $3,000 for that card. Now, there was no no. Oh, look at that nice big old piece of gum. Yep, I'm going to put that one aside and take a big old bite out of that if we find two Nolan Ryans and or Ricky Hendersons 
by the end of this video. There's George Foster. He was a pretty big beast. Uh, Dave, King, Dave Kingman also used to really hit some home runs. Jim Morales is looking pretty cool. Hey, it looks like uh, maybe maybe Ken Griffey Jr. We shouldn't credit to flipping the hat backwards. Maybe we got to go to Jim Morales and give him some cred. Charlie Moore right there, probably wishing he had a hat on in that picture. Maybe the uh, cameraman just sniped him there. Mike Prawley. No Hall of Famers in this pack. Shane Raleigh, Johnny Grubb, and Cesar Geronimo is the last one for Tim. So Tim has a nice big run here of five packs. So that first pack didn't have much in it. Here's the next one. Got good old Dave Steeb leading things off. Another nice big piece of gum there as well. Looks just like it used to look back in the day. Dave Steeb, great pitcher for a few years. Actually, a nice nice career from Dave Steeb. Dan Quisenberry. Tom Underwood, we have a Hall of Famer. It's Dave Winfield, Hall of Fame alert. That's a nice card. Centering on these are not that bad. There's Raleigh Fingers, another Hall of Famer. We're going to sleeve up any Hall of Famer we find for you today. We'll try to get these in the mail sometime next week. Oh, Future Star card. Got a little excited there. Thought maybe, just maybe, we would have the rookie card of Tim Raines. And also, Fernando Valenzuela has a rookie card that looks exactly the same as that one. Same format. It's the Future Star design. Nice big old piece of gum. Flip that off to the side. Let's see what we've got in this next one for Tim. Ellis Valentine. Hey, Ozzy Smith. Very nice. Now, this card in the PSA 10 will get you about three dollars to $400. So that is a great card right there. We'll take good care of this one. Let's see if is it PSA 10 worthy. I think it might not be just because there might be just a little, see that little edge right there? Just to see that, see it, see it right now? That might cost you. It's really, really, really tough to get PSA 10s, and that's what, especially from 1981. Your best chance, nice Dave Parker All Star card, is probably pulling them fresh from a pack like this. These packs have been sealed for 41 years. Um, I was literally like three months old when this when this release came out. That's pretty crazy. So I actually never got to rip a box of these in my childhood. Raleigh Fingers, I think, coming up. Yeah, there's the mustache. There's Hall of Famer Raleigh Fingers. Now he's on the back, so he may have a little bit of wax stain standing going on. Let's get that piece of gum off of Ron Camp. Nice Raleigh Fingers. I'll put that aside with the Hall of Famers for Tim. And let's see what else. Jack Clark, very, very nice career from Jack Clark. Mostly remember him from his time with the um, Cardinals. Joe Patini looks like he might be in disguise right there. Kind of looks like, I don't know, it reminds me of Bobby Valentine hiding in the dugout trying to evade the umpires. Definitely does not look like a real person. I think that's a paste on mustache and glasses and <laughs> he just went disguise mode and uh, faked out the uh, photographer there. We've got Don Sutton, who's a Hall of Famer, on the earned run average leader card. And Rick Camp, still no Harold Baines rookie card or Nolan Ryan or second year Ricky Henderson. Next up, we've got a Wayne Gross on the back and Hall of Famer on the uh, other back, Ted Simmons. There's Ken Griffey Sr. in the dugout. Rick Sutcliffe, he had a really good 1981 season when he was... Uh, Traded, traded over and had like just ridiculous low earned run average. There's Bill Buckner, really great player. Junior Kennedy, don't remember him at all. All-star card, Fred Lynn, little, little bubble there. Kind of stinks from the factory. Mike Loom, don't remember him at all. There's Gaylord Perry, Hall of Famer. Gaylord Perry for Tim. Man, he looked uh, so old. Still managed to pitch for a few more years after that. Bobby Bonds. There's Barry's dad right there. Look at that hair. <laughs> Bobby Bonds. And the last one is Hall of Famer, Ted Simmons with the Cardinals. He had a nice long career. And although I never thought of him as a Hall of Famer, he uh, he definitely is one now. So a lot of his cards spiked up after that. Uh, got the call there. Jonathan Marshall's up next. He has two packs. Packs 9 and 10. We'll take those two packs out. We'll put them right there and see what we can find for Jonathan here. Good luck, Jonathan. Haven't seen any repeats yet, which is nice. Man, now I'm kind of reconsidering eating the gum. Look how gross this one. Look at uh Yikes. All right, maybe uh, let's hope there's no two Rickies in here. Just for my health sake. Or two Nolans. Jonathan's hoping he's going to get one. 
we got Rick Anderson. So why was that piece of gum so disgusting looking? I'm guessing because it might be on the bottom of the box and maybe, just maybe these were sitting on a floor at some point of a basement and just got a little bit of moisture up through them that way. Steve Carlton is a nice Hall of Fame card there. And Bill Caudill, this one uh, you can see, has a little bit of, uh, definitely took a, a piece of the, the gum hit right there, so to speak. This next one's right off the top, so this this pack should be nice and fresh. This pack's going to feature Houston Astros lefty Joe Sambito. The gum looks nice. And let's see. We have starting to see some doubles now with Jason Thompson, that uh, Jack Clark, Larry Heisel, and let's see what else. Buddy Bell. There's the rookie card. Who's, I guess, the best one there? Mike Jones, maybe? And we have another rookie card. Who's the best one on that one? Paul Householder, Jeff Comb, and Bruce Berenyi. Man, I don't even know if any of those guys made much of a career. Get that last little stick of gum off of there. So, Jonathan, thank you very much. Unfortunately, one Hall of Famer in that run. That was the Steve Carlton. We keep working our way down the stack here. The Raymond J. Seitzinger has the next three packs. 11, 12, and 13. Ken Griffey Sr. on the very top. Nice, nice piece of gum right there. I'm, every time I see it, eh, there's a little brown spot right there. <laughs> when I see a nice piece of gum, I'm putting it aside in my possibly have to eat stack. Rick Sutcliffe again. Rick Sofield looking for some big hits. There's Mario Mendoza, who was famous for the Mendoza line. If you look at his batting average, we're always right around the 200 mark. So the Mendoza line, if you ever heard that term before, like so-and-so is hitting around the Mendoza line, it means you're hitting right around 200 because Mendoza was a very, very good fielder but couldn't really hit a lick at the plate. And uh, this guy could. Joe Morgan, Hall of Famer. That's a great card right there. And Dennis Lamp is the last one in the first pack for Dreamer Believer. Let's go and see what he's got in the next one. Raymond, whose YouTube handle is Dreamer Believer. Let's see what we can find. In pack number two, looking for the... Can we at least find one of these big cards that I'm looking for? There's Goose Gossage, who's a Hall of Famer. So I would say the big four, Ricky Henderson won. Maybe even the Nolan Ryan, too. And then after that, you've got the top rookies of Harold Baines. There's Pete Rose and uh, Tim Raines. And there he is, Tim Raines, Hall of Fame card right there. So this card in a PSA 10, folks, I was looking at recent, so recently sold Tim Raines in PSA 10. It goes for about eight hundred dollars, eight to nine hundred dollars. If you can grab a PSA ten score on this one, Dreamer Believer, we'll take that one aside. And uh, there's a nice Steve Carlton right there. Now that one, I'm looking at it and just doing some, I don't know, trying to see if it would get a ten or, or I can't really tell of any blemishes on there. So I will go ahead and uh, toss that one in. Uh, I guess I guess we'll top one. Yeah, we'll one touch it. Yeah, we'll one touch it because I think that. Pretty short. The last time I pulled a big card for Dreamer Believer, it was a super, super short print of Alec Bowman. I think he got that one graded. So I, I do think that he is getting stuff graded. So I'll go ahead and take care of that one for you. It's good to go. I did not see any noticeable blemishes, such as a little touch of softness on any corners or any. If I would have seen something, I probably wouldn't have used the one touch on it. I didn't think it was going to get a 10 or possibly. So, Dear Believer, you can check that over and hopefully you'll get it. There's an Alan Trammell who is a Hall of Famer. That's a nice card right there. Little hit to win scratch game, baseball checklist, Cincinnati Reds team card. And now we are down to, oh, still a little over half the box left. All right, so. Still plenty of time left to find these big cards. Alexander's up next. Spots 14 and 15, so two more packs. Let's grab those and see what we can find. In this next one, there's the gum. Got the team checklist back there. Haven't seen Reggie Jackson yet either in this. There's George Brett. Hopefully by the end of this box, we'll, we will have seen most of the major stars of this era. Dave Skaggs, and we've got a Rick Anderson rookie card there. Lamar Hoyt, Steve Rogers, and there's the Oakland A's team card for Alexander. Let's continue on here for Alexander and see what else we can do for you. In pack number two, 15 overall, 36 packs per box. Yeah, this is um, 
terms of baseball card exchange authenticated boxes, a, a 1980 box goes for about $4,000. So this one is much more affordable than uh, just the year prior. Now, obviously, that's a lot more expensive because it's Henderson's rookie and a PSA 10 Henderson, if you can find him is worth uh, just a ton more money, obviously. There's a Steve Carlton, second time seeing that one. He's a Hall of Famer, so we'll take care of that one for you, Alexander, get that bad boy all sleeved up. Next up, Chad, with the last three in the first half of the box. Let's see what we can do here for you, Chad. Tomorrow's a big release day, Friday. Topps Chrome and Immaculate both coming out. I've already sold some of the spots on Chrome. Where I think we're pretty much out of jumbos. We might have one box left. We have some hobby boxes remaining. There's Ray Knight. I did not like Ray Knight as a kid for whatever reason. I don't know why. Just didn't like him. Jeff Jones looking over his shoulder there like someone's going to take his job. Rusty Staub. Got Steve Carlton once again. Obviously, Steve Carlton was a really good pitcher because he's on most of these leaders cards. And Jamie Quirk. And Daryl Porter's the last one for Chad. Chad, let's get to this next pack. That bottom pack has me a little nervous. Might have a little bit of mold on that gum once again. Mario Mendoza leads this pack off. Dave Kingman All-Star card. There's Tommy Herr. Richie Hebner. And let's see. Joe Ferguson. Buddy Solomon from the Buccos. Phillies team card featuring Mike Schmidt somewhere in there. And Dan Graham also featuring the flip back hat. A la Ken Griffey Jr. All right, so... Last pack for Chad. Possible moldy piece of gum in this one. Still have yet to find Ricky Henderson. Oh, hey, that one doesn't look bad at all. I don't understand that whatsoever. We had one moldy piece and uh, now one nice piece, uh, both from the bottom of the box. So theories on that, I don't know. I don't think this is a Franken box. That's something you always have to look out for. Um, Franken boxes where somebody will maybe purchase a 1980 whatever box or 70 whatever box and there'll be a few packs short or maybe multiple packs short and they will just go through and just as they go collect packs and fill it up with 36 packs it seems like the consistency of all the gum is very similar except for that one weirdo pack at the bottom of that first stack let's move on to the next stack Cody Rush is going to start us off here with pack number 19, Jerry White will lead off this next one. Bob Watson on the back. Good old Bob Nepper on the, uh, in there. Bob Horner, somewhat of a slugger there. John Stearns, Eric Rasmussen. There's Alan Trammell once again for Cody. Dave Roberts, and still no Griffey. No, Nolan. Continuing on to pack number 20 and 21. Let's see if Gary Hoffman can find it. Good luck to you, Gary. There's Dave Roberts. Rick Roden. Very good pitcher there. Hoping to find... Okay, this is weird. Every now and then, this kind of anomaly happens where the cards are flipped upside down. I know what some of you are thinking. I know what some of you are, I know what some people are thinking. Searched, it's searched. I always, uh, I always hate that as well when that happens. Um, but um, that does happen from time to time. Now I'm not an expert on um, the collation of these, but if you really, really know your stuff and really do your research, if you would buy a sealed box of something like th like this. You would know just by the collation. You would learn the sequence, and then you would know if something was searched or not. You'd be able to start to tell just because certain cards could be lifted out or the sequence could be all screwed up. There's a Hall of Famer, Don Sutton. So the cards always fall in the packs in the same order. Here's another mess up. So maybe it's just uh, kind of a, mis I don't know, factory anomaly. There's Mike Schmidt. We are seeing a lot of the Hall of Famers in here just have not hit the, uh, the big boy cards yet. Uh, oh, man, they were having some problems at the uh, the factory on this day. Look at this bump wheels and the terrible miscut right there. That's uh, that's kind of cool. I'd be kind of mad if that was Ricky Henderson, but kind of cool that uh, you get uh, a card like that. And there's that hit to win card. So, Gary, thank you very much. Pack number 20 and 21 in the book. You got a cool miscut card. There's some people there that collect that. Here's pack number 22 from Michelle. Let's see if we continue to have that weird collation here with the cards all flipped around 
yep, it's just gonna be a thing in this uh, this this side of the box, I guess. There's Richie Zisk, Barry Evans, Mike Tyson, not the boxer. And here comes a rookie card. Nothing happening there. Flip this around. We've got Ed Halicki. Two more cards for Michelle. It's going to be Kevin Saucier. <laughs> Interesting name. And Terry Whitfield is the last one for Michelle. All right. So still no Ricky. No Nolan. No Harold. Did find the Tim Raines, which is, uh, you know, arguably the best rookie card in the set. Some people would say Harold Baines, but uh, I think that uh, I think that Ricky probably might, uh, or the uh, the Tim Raines might be worth just a bit more. Ed Figueroa right there, Gorman Thomas, who was a bit of a slugger back then. And we've got a rookie card coming up. It's good old Paul Householder once again. Also, I haven't found the Kirk Gibson yet either. There's Mike Schmidt and Reggie Jackson, our first Reggie Jackson signing of the day. Rod Scurry and uh, Ron Hassey's really happy right there. Good picture of Ronnie. Our next pack for Lindsay. We've got Enrique Romo to start things off. Ron Say. Um, there's Al Williams. Glenn Abbott. Rookie card of Tita Landrum. And it looks like we are now back to the cards being sorted in the correct order. There's Ricky Henderson stolen base leader card. So at least one Ricky signing, albeit not his regular base card. So Lindsay, thank you. We're moving on to spot number 25 and 26. Uh, Tara, let's see what we can find here. Grab the next two packs out and see what we've got. Play hit to win for valuable Wilson prizes. I wonder what they were giving away, like gloves and stuff. Kind of cool. I never participated in any of those. There's Hall of Famer Tony Perez, Rick Russell, Jose Cardinal. So I guess you can win a bat, a ball, a glove, or a Tom's baseball book. Um, back when I was collecting cards, they were giving away like spring training trips and stuff like that to the following year, which is cool. But I don't, I don't think I ever bothered to send uh, in like a three by five and try it. Has anyone out there, had, did you do it? Did anyone ever win any of those prizes that Topps was offering up, those free trips to spring training? That's kind of cool. I wish they'd still do stuff like that. Willie Wilson, Mickey Rivers, those were two decent players. Man, I thought that was the Nolan for just a second. The Nolan's kind of framed in that same exact way with him just standing there. And still, no Nolan Ryan. So, Tara, thank you very much. We're moving ahead now to spots 27 right here 28 and 29 wesley's got three packs here we go wesley let's see what we've got this card on top it's going to be a rick camp and the gum is all broken apart here man it's very very dusty on the back of that gene tennis card there's rick dempsey joe youngblood famous for getting two hits and for two different teams on the same day Played a afternoon game, got traded in the afternoon, and then went to uh, another team and got another hit. There's Mark the Bird Fidrich. Had crazy good stuff at the outset of his career and then kind of faded. Mario Soto and Gene Tennis is the last one. All right, next pack up, Wesley. Let's see what we can do here. Down to our last stack in this box. And we've got Dan Meyer leading things off. Mike Tyson once again. So there he is, Ricky Henderson, number one. Wesley, you did it for us. Now I've got to, i got to hope that we don't find a second Ricky. It is a little off center, maybe like, I don't know, what, what, what do you say, 30, 70 off center, maybe somewhere around there. The back of the card looks pretty good. So Ricky Henderson, if that would get a PSA 10, which I don't know if it will because of the centering, it's almost a $3,000 card. But once again, it's really, really tough to get a PSA 10. So I don't want, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like it's a 50-50 chance. It's, it's tough. Jim Rice, another Hall of Famer. We've got Eric Soderholm right there. J.R. Richard, man, he had such a good career. He had a stroke in 1981, and uh, it cost him his career, unfortunately. He was, uh, he was a fireballer right up there alongside Nolan Ryan in terms of strikeout numbers. And, uh, man, there's a nice Johnny Bench. So this is a nice run here for Wesley. Getting some nice uh, Hall of Famers along with that Ricky Henderson. And the Kirk Gibson rookie card is now here. So very nice. Hey, we're almost finding everybody. I, I was waiting on Nolan Ryan and uh, uh, Harold Baines still. Those are the last two holdouts 
I guess, and then we will have found everybody, which is pretty nice. Doesn't always happen that way. There's Tom Seaver, Hall of Famer. A lot of times you'll buy a box, and there's about, what, 500 and some cards in a box, and uh, there's, there's 792 in a set. So a lot of times you will not get the card you're after. Maybe 50-50, maybe I don't know what the percentage is, but it always stinks when you buy a box and you're chasing after a big ticket item and you don't pull it. Uh, Michael's up next. He actually has two packs, not three. So let's go put that third one back. Michael Jansta, spot number 30 and 31. So if we pull a second Ricky Henderson, I'm going to take a big old bite out of this gum. And uh, then I'll have to let you know tonight in the live stream how I'm feeling a little bit later. I'm going to do an auction tonight, so I hope you can join us for that. New release of Chrome and Immaculate tomorrow. Saturday, um, I think we're going to... I think I've got plans on Saturday, so I think I'm going to skip the Saturday showdown on Saturday and not do it live. I'm still trying to decide if I want to do it on Sunday night live or maybe just go and uh, ask my brother if he wants to do a Saturday showdown. Look at this card. I like this picture. John Pacella is like a wild man. <laughs> Look at the hat just flying off. That That's a fun picture right there. Wild man John Pacella. Cliff Johnson and Lenny Randall there at the back side. Let's check Michael's next pack and see what we've got in this one. The third Allen Trammell of the box. So a whole bunch of Trammels. Rick Monday there as well. Al Oliver had a great career, and we're getting down towards the end. We've got maybe five packs left. There's Sweet Lou Whitaker. Dave Beard, Pat Dempsey, Mike Schmidt, second time seeing that one. Jerry Kuzman who some baseball card collectors only know that name because he shares the rookie card with Nolan Ryan from 1968. Bradley Bender, 32 and 33s. We are almost done with 1981 tops. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope everyone has had a very pleasant Thursday. When I saw this box, I was like, I don't think I've ever opened a box of those by itself on the channel. Might as well give it a try. There's Johnny Bench. It's been good so far. It hasn't been perfect without the Nolan Ryan. Would have liked to have seen Nolan, but who knows? Maybe we'll find him. Bradley, you've got one more pack to do it here, and then we've got three packs left for one final contestant. Again, if you'd like to try any of our breaks out or participate, there's Kirk Gibson for the second time. Very, very nice. And George Brett right after him. We sell all of our spots on Patreon. Links in the description if you'd like to sign up there. Tommy John. That's a name that will probably be forever linked to... Uh, to baseball, Tommy John surgery. That's such a common practice nowadays with most pitchers having it done at one point or another in their career where they tear the ligament in their elbow and have to have it replaced with one from their leg. Tommy John was the pioneer having that one done and we're almost done. Mike Dowdy is up. Bringing up the rear here on this throwback Thursday with spots 34, 35, and 36. Let's see what we can do here for you. Looking for a second Ricky to take a bite of the gum or a Nolan Ryan. I like that card, 1980 World Series. Kind of a cool card right there. And Mike Lacoste is the last one. Down to two packs left. All right, Mike, here we go. Ozzy Smith, second, actually third year card. His rookie card is 1979. That's a good one right there. Ray Knight once again. So we're seeing some repeats through this section. Dave Steeb once again. Terry Harper. We've got uh, Danny Heap, rookie card there, and Ron Reed. So, are we going to have some last pack magic here for Mike? Let's see what we've got here. Again, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you will hit that thumbs up button. And Carl Yastrzemski, we haven't seen him yet. That's a good sign. Yastrzemski, who's a Hall of Famer, great card right there. We have seen Eric Rasmussen already. Uh, Larry Gurr, I don't know if we've seen him. Kiko Garcia winking at the camera. Are we going to get the Nolan Ryan or Harold Baines in this pack? Probably not because there's Rob Wilfong. He's bringing up Rennie Martin again, almost laughing at us that uh, he's replacing where Nolan Ryan might have fallen, and that's it. No Nolan Ryan in this one. We did get the Ricky Henderson second-year card. We did get the Tim Raines. Uh, lots of Hall of Famers as well. So it was a fun rip going back to 1981. Some of you guys that might be a few years older than me, this might have been your heyday, ripping 81 tops back in the day as a kid, and hopefully it brought back some very fond memories. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday, and I hope you can check us out in our live auction tonight. And if not, I will see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.